rockets for a while and we're ready to start analyzing electric circuits. But first we will take a moment to examine the mathematics of computational calculus. That is, we will show that the solutions that Euler's method calculates are accurate. For example, if we start with a first order differential equation, i.e. a velocity equation, v of t equal p prime of t equals minus t squared over 10 plus t, this differential equation has an analytic solution. P of t equals minus t cubed over 30 plus t squared over 2. The analytic solution is written as a mathematical formula that computes the exact value for P of t. We will show that as the subinterval size decreases, the solution to the differential equation computed by Euler's method accurately approximates the exact solution. The sad fact is that most differential equations arising in physics and engineering don't have analytic solutions. However, this should not trouble you because even common functions like the trigonometric functions and exponentials and logs cannot be computed exactly and are computed using Taylor series approximations. Approximations are the norm for most applied mathematics. Euler's method applies only to ordinary differential equations. That is, differential equations with one independent variable. It applies directly to first order differential equations, and we have seen that a second order differential equation can be rewritten as two first order equations. The general form of a first order differential equation is p prime of t equals a function of t and p of t. The general form is covered in the book in the video, we'll consider only the simplest case when p prime of t is a function of t only. We assume that the acceleration of p, that is p double prime, is bounded on the interval of interest by a constant a. So let's examine how Euler's method works, and we'll use p prime of t equals minus t squared divided by 10 plus t as our example velocity function. Euler's method begins by subdividing the time interval of interest into shorter subintervals of length dt. The graph shows p prime of t, the true velocity function, graphed in black, and the approximate velocity function, v sub c of t, used by the Euler approximation graphed in red. At the start of each subinterval, the black true velocity and the red approximate velocity are equal. The approximate velocity remains constant for the duration of the subinterval and is hence horizontal on the subinterval. Such a function is called a step function. Distance traveled in each subinterval is calculated by multiplying the value of the red approximate velocity function in the subinterval times the subinterval length dt. Here is where the rubber meets the road. We assume that the acceleration of the true velocity is bounded on the entire interval of interest by the constant a. The graph shows the true velocity in black, the velocity of the computed solution in red, and the limits on the true velocity on the central subinterval imposed by our assumption that acceleration is bounded by a in green. That is, both green lines equal the true velocity at the start of the central subinterval, and the upper line has slope a, the lower line has slope minus a. Given that the true acceleration is bounded by a, 
the velocity cannot wander outside these green lines on the subinterval. The velocity error is the difference between the true velocity and the computational velocity, that is, p prime of t minus v sub c of t. And we're interested in the maximum value that the error can have on the subinterval. Since v sub c of t equals p prime of t at the start of the subinterval, the velocity error is zero at the start of the subinterval. Since v sub c of t is constant on the subinterval, the rate of change of the velocity error equals the rate of change of the true velocity, and that's p double prime. Since p double prime is less than a by assumption, the rate of change of the velocity error on the subinterval is bounded by a. And since the velocity error starts at zero and grows at a rate less than a for the subinterval time of dt, the maximum value it can have is a times dt. The computed distance traveled error for a subinterval is less than the maximum velocity error times dt, and that is a times dt times dt, or a times dt squared. The total distance traveled error is less than the sum of the maximum errors for each subinterval, and with n subintervals, that number is n times a times dt squared. With a total interval length of t, 10 in our example, the subinterval length is dt equals t divided by n. So the total distance traveled error is less than n times a times dt squared which equals n times a times t over n squared, which equals a times t squared divided by n, and a times t squared divided by n goes to zero as n gets larger. That is, Euler's method calculates accurate approximate solutions. Since our example differential equation has an analytic solution, we can graph the true value of the position function corresponding to the differential equation. These graphs show the true velocity and position functions in black and the Euler estimated velocity and position functions in red. They show how the Euler estimates improve as the subinterval size decreases. Nobody loved me, said honey, nobody seemed to care. Oh, nobody loved me, nobody, nobody seemed to care. Speak of bad luck and trouble, you know I've had my share. Oh, hey, every day, day. Hey.